feeling. It has both, both uh, not only a verb, I feel, but also the cognitive sense of our sense. You know, I have a feeling that this is about this or that. You mean it's rational. You, you have a sense what it, what it happened. It's predictive. Uh, it's prophetic. So feeling often, you know, often maybe, I hope always, a uh, relatively positive term, but emotion is not. So Zhu Xi's idea is using the heart and mind to try to harmonize your emotions. The best way to harmonize your emotions is in the spirit of reverence. And so don't worry about trying to find the state of mind between, you know, before feelings are aroused. And so he inadvertently deviated from the mention point of view. And of course, he never recognized his Xunxian. So he said, this is mentions. And many of his disciples just accepted, that's mentions. That's why he misinterpreted, you know, in a curious way, misinterpreted some of the very key uh, statements in mentions. And most of the people accepted his misinterpretation as correct. Uh, there was one, uh, one scholar of his contemporary, we will not get a chance to talk about it, by the name of Lu, L-U. And he said, Zhu Xi didn't get it right. And uh, Zhu Xi didn't quite understand what uh, 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 Mencius is talking about. So after, after the spring break, we're going to deal with uh, a very important thinker uh, by the name of Wang Yangming, W-A-N-G, Y-A-N-G, M-I-N-G. And this person, uh, again, is very complicated. He just believed that he was an uh, inheritor of uh, Zhu Xi's philosophy. And yet, he also knew that Zhu Xi probably didn't get it right. So he hoped that Zhu Xi got it right and tried to misinterpret Zhu Xi. And many people accepted his misinterpretation of Zhu Xi and imagined that Zhu Xi actually was an authentic follower of Manchus. You know the complexity of the situation, right? Zhu Xi this is my interpretation, of course, I may be wrong too, right? <laughs> now, Zhu Xi's interpretation of Mencius deviated from the main thrust of the Mencius interpretation. And yet, it's closer to Xunzi, but he just assumed that Xunzi got it wrong. He believed that human nature is good, so he believed he was an authentic interpretation of Zhu Xi, especially his commentaries of the four books. And most of his contemporaries accepted it. And so they believed that Zhu Xi got it right. There was one guy, a lunar, by the name of Lu, he said, this guy didn't understand Zhu Xi. And he made a claim, which again is very complicated. He said, I read Manchus, I understood. And I didn't follow all these commentaries. I read Manchus, and I got it right. How can you do that? 1,000 years later, right? But anyway, he made that claim. And now we know that he's probably correct. So these major thinkers, say, a few hundred years later, by the name of Wang Yami, W-A-N-G, followed Lu's critique of Zhu Xi, but he strongly believed he's a follower of Zhu Xi, because Zhu Xi was so powerful, overwhelming. If you say you're not a follower of Zhu Xi, but not a strategic, you know, he just believed that Zhu Xi got it right, but somehow there's something that needs to be tinkered. So he was a follower of Zhu Xi, but he knew that something wrong with Zhu Xi. And yet, he refused to accept that as an inauthentic interpretation. So that, that's uh, the picture. Uh, well, let me make it uh, even more complicated. I mean, historically, it's amusing. Huh? This is what most of the scholars in China accept. From Zhu Xi, challenged by Lu Xiangzan, then to Wang Yangming, this is the development of Confucian thought in terms of its, uh, we call it, uh, uh, in the logic. Instead of saying this is what actually happened in historic, they made a further claim, not only this was actually what actually happened historically, this was also logically ought to have happened because Zhu Xi didn't get it right. So a correction, right? Now that's Chinese philosophy, Chinese Confucianism. Let's introduce Korean as you know, that the Korean Confucianists turned out to be all followers of Zhu Xi, right? And there was a great Conf uh, Korean Confucian thinker by the name of Yi Tui Ke. And uh, if you ever visit Korea, if you have a friend from Korea, ask for 1001. 
which is like one dollar U.S. or ten dollar RMB, you know, the wide, most widely circulated uh, currency. The uh, portrait of that currency, of course, was not Washington, was not Mao Zedong, was Li Tuiyin. So by far the most influential thinker, and also reflected the uh, intellectual mind of Korea. They respected scholars like the French situation, but even in France, and uh, I don't know, uh, some of the great minds uh, like Voltaire and so forth may have appeared on the currency, but the currency was very high, like 1,000, 2,000, probably, rather than one dollar. Now this guy was so brilliant, and in fact, uh, something not happened. Something didn't happen. This is a counterfactual presentation. Counterfactual meaning historically it didn't happen, but try to imagine if it happened. In a counterfactual case, when this uh, scholar Wang, following Lu, criticized Zhu, <laughs> uh, when he did it, there was no challenge of his time. This is in Chinese Confucian thought. But if you include the Korean Confucian thought, this Yi Tui Ye, he was also a follower of Zhu Xi, and he responded to the challenge. The challenge never happened in China, right? Uh, so hypothetically, if someone had been so well, uh, well seasoned in Confucian thought and then responded to uh, Wang Yangming's challenge, there were a number of people who responded, but they were not great thinkers. So the responses were just relegated to the background. But this great Korean thinker, you know, by far the most influential, following Zhu Xi, could have responded to Wang Yami in China, but he was in Korea. But if he broadened the Confucian scope, not just Chinese Confucianism, but East Asia, then the Korean side would have to be introduced. So you can say that this man, Tuege, in the time, he, he was um, a little bit early, or no, a little bit later than Wang. So he responded to the challenge. And that response, based upon one very important question, this is what, what I want to end with this observation. One very, very important issue. Zhu Xi, every Confucian thinkers of the time, accepted the proposition that human nature is principle. Principle, of course, uh, this one, is the underlying reality of everything. That's how human nature, because the human nature is confirmed by heaven. So, but, Many scholars also accepted the, the fact, uh, accept the, uh, the idea that a human heart and mind is also a principle. Because the human heart and mind, from the, uh, from the mentioned point of view, is the manifestation of our feelings of commiseration, or the four feelings. And therefore, the, the goodness of the human, uh, nat uh, human nature, the goodness of human nature, is uh, manifested and reviewed um, in the feeling of commiseration and all other, other sprouts of the human heart and mind. So we can talk about the human heart and mind is also principle. But uh, Zhu Xi refused to accept it because he felt the human heart and mind involves both uh, principle and emotions. Therefore, Zhu Xi made a very clear idea that the principle is static. Principle inherent in human nature is our substance, defines who we are. As a principle, it doesn't have any energy, it doesn't move. Uh, in Freudian psychology, this uh, a digression but useful, Freudian psychology, you know the difference between ego, ego and it, right? It is your institutional demands, especially your sexual drives. So in, uh, in Freudian psychology, you, Tushi also uses the same example. It's really fascinating. A man on a horse. You ride a horse. But the energy comes from the horse. The man will be able to direct the horse. But if the horse refuses to be directed, you're in trouble. Because the horse is much more powerful than you are. So the energy and the intellectual direction, these two are separable. But in Zhuxi, it's more radical, saying this principle which defines what a human being is, is static, never moves. So it's not a creative force. It's, uh, it doesn't move, it's just the principle. For example, the principle of, uh, of a boat 